Today's adventure brings us to the Ohio State Reformatory. It first opened its doors in 1896 and in 1983 was placed on the National Registry of Historical Places here in Mansfield. We're going in. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Now I have been here back in 2013. Back in 2013, I documented segments of the property for my Shawshank Redemption filming location. But today, I wanna to dive in deeper to the nooks and crannies of the premises. Join me, shall you? Next to the West Administrative Wing, check out the floor. I really like the design of the tiles. And if you peek out the window, you can see the side angle of the building and an old metal gate standing there in the newly paved road. Those were used in the film Air Force One. In fact, that whole courtyard can be seen in one of the shots from the movie. This toy train was made by an inmate in the 1950s. And they also have a plate and a clock tower that were made here by the prison inmates. Here in the annex, this door is from the electrocution chamber and they have the electrical chair there as well as a mask that they would place over the face. This hood was placed on the condemned person just prior to electrocution in that chair as well as the telephone that makes the call giving the order and the box with all the the gears and the knobs to make it operate just like in green mile you would place the sponge upon the head right there didn't cool you down very much that's for sure oh yeah my sister's here with me as well okay. some serious heavy duty locks there as well as a straight jacket and some handcuffs. I like the creaky wooden floors in here. Give quite a bit of cool ambiance. Check out the ceiling. This foyer is very beautiful. Speaking of stained glass, look on the right. There's like three huge chunks of stained glass leading up that staircase. Some items on loan, including this, which you would hold in front of you during your mug shot. And then you'd put this on and this is what you wore your days in the prison. If you wanted to get tattooed, you had to use this item made out of a toothbrush handle, duct tape, bell wire, and the tip of a ballpoint pen. And most likely the item on top would be confiscated. You cannot have a weapon of like that in here. For just a nickel, you could purchase this little coupon, which was good for a haircut. That's the top part of the device. And you would sit in this chair or one like it and get your haircut. The last time I was here a few years ago, none of these items were here. They were restoring the whole building. So pretty cool to see it current day. These old school eating utensils and trays, salt and pepper shakers are huge. And this bag of tobacco has an unusual name, nicknamed bug dust. I guess that's what they referred to chewing tobacco as, bug dust. My daughter got married in the residence. A lot of times they uh, lived here and the boys were even taught to drive by an inmate. So the warden's son was taught to drive by a prisoner. Yeah. are some areas that we're not allowed in. They are roped off. You can peek around the corner and just see a little bit of the abandoned areas. But most of the spots you are allowed. Just 
like the warden would have wanted it. Side of the walls and the ceiling through this corridor is deteriorating. Most of the bottom floors have been renovated. But once you leave that area, everything else is pretty much how it was. Under this archway is a bathroom. No longer operational. You see the rusted out sink. There's a flower here designated for Helen. A tub, very dirty bathing area, and a commode. And the pink paint is starting to shine through the outer coating of white paint that's peeling off. Whoa! Is that a bunny rabbit? Hidden pink bunny. This door has an opening here where you could slide medication and it's clamped on you know, with a little hook there. And on the opposite side, there's an area that the nurse or the guard could just speak through there to talk to whoever was on the opposite side. Some serious history shining through here. Look at this old wallpaper. Wow, it's like a bunch of different layers and different colors from decades and decades of just different layers that they've placed on the walls. The warden's bathroom and living quarters, even some furniture, well, parts of the furniture and chairs. Quite a big area that he resided in. Went all the way into into this room as well. Fireplace down here to stay warm. From the other angle, looking back into the living area. Notice the roof there starting to cave in. There's some wire mesh holding it together. But it has seen, definitely seen better days. Closet area with drawers and places to hang your clothes. You know, it's interesting because we all have homes, we all live you know, in our houses. But imagine living in a prison. This is where you reside. This is where, this is what you call home. Slightly different than what, slightly different than what most of us are used to. Oh, I wonder if this one works getting water. Right? No, 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 don't touch that, don't touch that. You would get, fl that would flood the whole place. It's a big freaking deal, man. Looks to be a little stage in that corner. You can see some of the items that they are using currently just to repair and clean, clean the place up. This little cubby hole is kind of interesting. It's only a couple feet across, not very wide. Look at the tile down here. This leads into one of the, the spires, the tower is right up there. That's pretty cool. It's like a little hidden compartment. It's a wasp there. Be careful, I don't want to get, oh, don't want to get stung. The fireplace mantle has been removed. I love this. It's old light. If these walls could talk, well better yet, if this light could talk, you could definitely tell some stories. A box of memories. A box of memories here. Oh, some old life world library books. One of the slogans was Ohio's University of Another Chance. This is where the inmates did their schooling and learning in this room here. However, if you were a troublemaker, they made you learn in solitary. And so this is the solitary room for learning. That's just what I think it is. I don't, I don't think that's really what it was. As the story goes, if you place the big wooden chair in the middle of the room and leave the room, it will move. What? Notice the X on the floor just before you enter this area. The building is so symmetrical that the X is always visible as long as there is light coming in the windows of the four rooms adjoining the hallway. Oh yeah, there it is. Pretty wild. They say X marks the spot. 
But I don't think there's any treasure under there. Just a really cool, really cool ambiance here in this little hallway there. Now I'm gonna head further upward to the main chapel. At one point, there were two levels. You can see this staircase that is now blocked off led up to a balcony. 1,900 inmates could pile in here. Look along the wall. You can see where the balcony once was. This room is huge. Wow. If you are being sacrilegious, you get thrown up in there and one on the, on the bottom level. And there was a escape attempt which happened in this very room, designated with this historical marker. They tried chiseling out the wall right there. This was covered. There were some workers that would hide behind the cover. And over time, one of the guards thought, what are they up to? They removed the cover and they noticed that hole trying to get outdoors. Reading a little more, it was a cabinet. And all three of the inmates afterwards were taken to the hole and more time was added to their sentence. After that, no one was left alone in the chapel. And here's the pulpit, which would be the view from the preacher's perspective. A very impressive room, to say the least. The mural on the wall above the stage really, really adds to it. I don't want to be in here, get out of this place. I don't have the key. Oh, she's in. Do you guys have the key? Hey, no. You don't have the key? No. Oh, she got. Never mind. She's out. She's escaping. She's afraid. Should I call the? I'm gonna call the. I'm gonna call the guards. This is the largest cell block in the world. Two sided. This is one side. Six tiers tall, and you can see how far down it goes. Here's the second. Ooh, the lights just went off the second side you can get a pretty good perspective down through here past this mesh inside this room there is this mechanism here take a look at this I think this is what opens the doors to the cells the guard places hand here turn that or this way vice versa and the doors to all the cells on this level would open up. Time, when you're doing thinking, can draw out like a blade. James Lockhart was serving up to 15 years. And on February 6, 1960, he took his own life by setting himself on fire with matches and lighter fluid in this very cell. Here's a photo from back in the day, interior view of the hospital then and the hospital now. Don't want to get any closer and do not want to shoot any footage out the window that direction because there is an active prison and there are, there are prisoners in the yard. So I'm not going to show out there because it's asking me not to, but I did want to show the sign and let you know that on site is still currently an active prison behind this one. However, this is a photo opportunity. 
and I can see why because from this angle it's pretty incredible. Imagine climbing that winding staircase to get to the top. It just goes around and around and around. You can get dizzy. I don't know if I would get tired first or nauseous. From the bottom floor you can see the second level does not have the walkway protection. It did, but they have removed it from that point on. And the top four levels, they all have the outer gate. And of course the bottom doesn't need it because no one's gonna fall off, but I'm not allowed to walk up on that second, second level. When you showered, you did not do it in the privacy of your own little area. You showered with everyone else, which is perfectly fine unless Boggs is in the room. Just keep an eye out for Boggs. Tucked away down here are the solitary confinement cells. And while there is a toilet and a bed, I'm not seeing a sink of any type. When that door closes, it's nothing but darkness, except for that one little window. Here's an aerial view from 1964. The building I'm in at the moment is this structure. Everything up here has been bulldozed and the new active prison is back there. But all this still exists. And as most places you exit through the gift shop, I am surprised however to see that they are selling laser discs. This is not a DVD or a Blu-ray. This is a this is a laser disc. Huh. I do like this series of books. They are very informative, this Image of America series. And for the person who has everything, the, the gift that keeps on giving, the Ohio State Reformatory bulb for your tree. It's a Christmas ornament. <laughs> That's going to do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe now by doing so. Helps keep you in the loop and up to date on future uploads and adventures I will be going on on this channel. In the description box, I will be putting two different links. One to these and other t-shirts available on the Adam the Woo Spreadshirt and a link to the Shawshank Redemption filming location. A much more detailed element of all the different locations inside the reformatory and all around Mansfield, Ohio that I did back in 2013. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. They've escaped. They've escaped. Good job, guys. Good job. Hitchcock would be proud.